When we look at the Purim story, we might mistakenly think that Ahasuerus is the bad guy, Haman is the bad guy, and really our main focus and attention is on Mordechai and Esther. But I think we can ask ourselves an important question, and I believe the sages really are aware of this and point it out. I have to learn also from Ahasuerus. And the, que the question that comes out of it is this. Am I making the same mistake that Ahasuerus made? That's what I think we all have to ask ourselves, and, and I'll point out the mistake and explain what I mean. The rabbis tell us, at the beginning of the Megillah, Vayhi bime Ahasuerus, who Ahasuerus? It happened in the times of Ahasuerus. He is Ahasuerus. So there's an extra phrase here. We don't have to repeat he's Ahasuerus. We know he's Ahasuerus. They just said it. So why are they emphasizing he is Ahasuerus? So the rabbis point out a very, a very interesting idea. The word Ahasuerus is connected with Rosh and, uh, and Acharit. Acharit is end and Rosh is beginning. Beginning and end is hinted to in his name. In fact, the sages say in another place that Ahasuerus is a reference to Hashem, the one who the beginning and end belong to him. But in this context, we're, we're, we're using it on Ahasuerus himself. The rabbis point out that Ahasuerus was the same Ahasuerus at the beginning of the story and at the end of the story. He did not change. That means who? Who Ahasuerus? He is the same Ahasuerus that we mentioned in the word Vayi Bime Ahasuerus, the beginning of the story. He was that same Ahasuerus at the end of the story. And what, what type of person was he? So they make it clear so we don't get fooled because on the basic level of the story, we might have been fooled a bit and not realized what kind of wicked person he was. He was a Russia. He was wicked. He hated the Jews as much as Haman. So he was evil, and he was evil from the start of the story, and he was evil at the end of the story. And what are the rabbis trying to really teach us? I think that we, as Jews, have to learn from everything that Hashem is teaching us, and this message from the sages as well. We have to learn not to make the mistake that, that Ahas Verosh made. And what mistake is that? So I, I want to suggest this answer. Ahas Verosh was part of the Purim story, the Purim miracle. He was in close proximity to two of the holiest, most special people on earth, Mordechai and Esther. He also was this, one of the central figures in God's providence that was working through all of the people in the story. Okay? He, was, he, he lived through the story of Purim. He was one of the main people. And we see that at the end, when Haman is hung, there's a great revelation, and everybody realizes how the things were maneuvered and, and, and really organized by God. And the, the point is that Ahasuerus was also there to witness all of that, and even more so. God used him, God worked through him to bring about the miracle. He was a part, he was one of the players in, in God's uh, script, so to speak. He was one of the people involved. So we say to Ahasuerus and people like him, shame on you. You were there, you witnessed it, and you took part in the miracles of Hashem. And you let all that pass before your eyes, and you didn't let it change you? You didn't change one bit for the better? Shame on you. That's the mistake that Ahasuerus made, in that, that he was part of this miracle, this unbelievable power of God that was revealed in such a great way that the whole world saw the miracles of Hashem. And he stubbornly stuck and stood in his wickedness and did not let it turn him into a good person, did not bring him to believe in God and change his ways. That was his mistake. How does it apply to us? Obviously, everything we said applies to us, and we can all take a message in our own way, but I want to add another dimension to its applicability in, its, in, in, this, in this context. Esther herself, in the, in the Talmud, brings a discussion between her and the rabbis, where she pleads with them and says, write me, kitvuni lidorot, write me, for all generations, which she was asking to be part of Tanakh. But it's interesting, she says, write me for, forever. My story is a forever story. It's known that we are all Esther. Esther represents this spiritual concept of Klal Yisrael, Knesset Yisrael. And, and she represents 
the Jewish people in a state of exile, in a state of hiddenness, when they're downtrodden, when they're stuck. That's Esther. That's the story of Esther, and that's our story today. Today we are living in a darkness, the same darkness of Purim's story. And we have to learn not to make the mistake of Ahasuerus in our world today, in our lives today. And what is it? Hashem, God, is hiding. That's true. But He still is here and He's still doing. He creates this world from absolute nothingness for us on a daily basis, hourly, minutely basis. Hashem is with us. Hashem is protecting us. Hashem is running this world. And we partake of Hashem's world and we see and feel when we open our eyes through emuna, if not through knowledge, through emuna, Faith. We can see and feel Hashem in our lives and, and in the world. A nation cannot exist for a day with 70 enemies around us trying to kill us. We are a walking miracle. The fact that we are living and breathing right now is the, God's greatest miracle. Greater than the splitting of the sea, greater than the poor miracle, greater than any miracle is the fact that I'm talking to you right now because I'm alive. And I wasn't obliterated from existence because my ancestors were obliterated years before me. The fact that we're still alive and living is a testimony to the truth of the God of Israel and the fact that we're going to live forever and get everything He promised us. And so shame on us if we experience the entire history of creation that we can look at and study and learn from our sages and just look into a world, a living, breathing world that screams of Hashem's existence and to see that He's doing all of this for us and not be affected by it and not be changed by it, then it's shame on us, and we would be making the mistake of Ahasuerus. So the point is, learn from the, the mistakes to, to do what we're here to do. This is our moment. This is the final moment. <clears throat> Yesterday's history. Today is the moment that will define tomorrow and bring our geula. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's, it's scary. Yes, we are downtrodden. Yes, we're weak. Yes, it's dark. And yes, we can't find Hashem. But that's if we don't try hard enough. If we try harder, we will find Hashem. And He will be our strength. We're allowed to be scared. We're allowed to be weak. Because it's true. On our own, we would have been annihilated millennia ago. But with Hashem, we will conquer any and everything. Even though we're weak. Because we're weak. God says, I'm going to leave you few in number. And in the end of days, we're going to be so broken that, that it seems like impossible. The Jews are so fragmented, so scattered, so broken, so confused, so assimilated. And Hashem says, from that, I'm going to build my geula. You're going to be my redeemers. Because it's from the bottom that Hashem is going to show the ultimate greatness. And even though we came at the end of it all and we're on the bottom and we're broken and we're weak and we want to give up, and it's scary... Jew hatred is ignited. Anti-Semitism is anti-God. The world is screaming at God and they're using us. We're, we're his pawns. And it's very easy to put that yarmulke in our pocket. Very easy to, to lay low. But that's, that's what, he, what Mordechai tells Esther. Yes, you were conveniently protected in the, in, in the palace of Ahasuerus. Yes, you survived. And yes, it's scary. Yes, it's hard. But if you stay quiet now, in this moment... It will open for nothing. It's for this moment that you're here. And the salvation will come through you.